Revolut's extremely rapid growth across markets now has taken a very competitive and offensive turn as Revolut has hired Glauber Mota as its new Brazilian CEO for its ongoing push into Latin America. As market expansions are always a competitive matter and perceived as offensive in some ways, what makes Revolut's move into Brazil such a significant one in the future of the challenger banking market? Good morning, everyone. This is Merrick for Payment Jeans, and today it's all about payments. Mota joins Revolut from BTG Pratuca, a listed Brazilian financial services conglomerate, where he was partner and COO in the digital retail unit. As for Mota's note, Brazilians are one of the most active digital populations worldwide, and the number of unique users of mobile devices in Brazil has already exceeded 112 million, with a rising number using digital banks as their primary accounts. The ambitions are clear. Attack the Brazilian market, acquire as many new customers as possible, predominantly new bank users, if you will, and create monthly returning customers out of all of them. And we know that Revolut can be relentless in their pursuit of these metrics. The World Bank reports that 135 million people across Brazil, Colombia, and Mexico alone were unbanked back in 2017. At the same time, however, the region had massive mobile internet users. In 2019, there were 343 million mobile internet users across Latin, which is only expected to increase to 424 million by 2025. From a fintech funding perspective, the fintech startup and venture scene is unsurprisingly booming as global investors are piling in to back the new successes across the region. Most of the success is driven by mega rounds, which made up of almost 70% of the total funding back in 2021. Nubank is the most valuable digital bank in the world which started off as an initiative to kill off high fees and terrible services of Brazil's big banks. After its IPO, however, it's now valued at a whopping 41 billion US dollars. At 33 billion valuation, this number is perhaps a painful realization for Revolut or plain motivation, actually. Whichever is the case, Nikolai Storonsky is coming for the market where Nubank built the fundaments that allowed them to become the biggest digital bank in the world and pioneer as the first challenger bank to IPO. As mentioned before, Revolut is going to aggressively try to take over current new bank users, and it's all going to resolve around who can cater the best to the Brazilian and Latin American markets in a later stage. So, what are new banks' unique selling points, you may wonder? Well, rather simply put, it's reward systems, user independency, and no annual fees. For Revolut, it will boil down to low fees for banking and its crypto service offerings. The potential for Revolut to acquire a significant part of the market share is there, with banking, payments, and lending being the superstars in the region. Moreover, crypto, mortgages, and wealth management are on the rise as well, and Revolut play a big role in the battle for that market. But Nubank is already the success story in Brazil. The established player with a whopping 62% year-on-year growth in customer base last year. This all resolves around their offering that is very well catered to the Brazilian market. Now, the question remains, can Nubank continue its success with actual significant competition in the digital banking space? In our opinion, this could go both ways, as we see these two powerhouses as both having very favorable benefits from multiple perspectives. That is why we are very curious to hear your thoughts about the two. So let us know down in the comments below what you think of this battle. For now, I'd like to thank you again for watching and looking forward to seeing you again next week. Cheers, bye-bye.